Yeah. Body just isn't used to handling that speed and trying to clear all that lactic acid. It was just rigging up. Yeah, today it was thundering and lightning and raining. Probably not the smartest idea to be doing a track workout outside while it's thundering and lightning out. Um, rain is fine to work out in. Sometimes, depending on the weather, you have to adjust your times a little bit. Luckily today, it wasn't really windy at all, so that, that didn't have to play an effect at all, but um, yeah. Probably doing it in the, th the thunder and lightning wasn't as fun as though. <laughs> that probably should have been, you know, adjusted. I drink less coffee than Ben, so I'm I'm a one pour over coffee in the morning kind of person, and then either espresso in the afternoon um, or no coffee or black tea. So just. You know, everybody's metabolic response is different to how they process caffeine. And I'm a lot more sensitive to caffeine than Ben is. So I just have to scale it accordingly. Yeah. Right. So for me, coffee, I really like drip coffee, filter coffee. That's my go-to. Um, and so I'll usually have uh, two cups of coffee in the morning and uh, a lot of times a cup of coffee in the afternoon. Um, so that's... I don't know how many milligrams of, usually a cup of coffee is right around 200 milligrams. Um, and so I probably have close to 600 milligrams of caffeine a day. I don't like drinking coffee after three o'clock. That's usually my cutout time. So um, a lot of times it takes, <clears throat> um, I mean, it's different for everybody with metabolism. Um, but a lot of times it, um, caffeine half-life is around seven hours. Um, and so, um, I usually go that if I want to go to sleep within seven hours, then, uh, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm allowing my body to metabolize that caffeine. One of the rules early on in our relationship was no dogs in the bedroom because I'm a lighter sleeper and that's probably good with this guy because... Although you said... This morning, when you fell back asleep, you were lulled to sleep by his snoring. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> That's true. This is our bedroom. Super exciting. You'll notice no screens. So we don't, this is screen and dog free zone normally. The biggest thing is we have dual blackout curtains. Yeah. We have blackout curtain number one and then blackout curtains number two. So it gets real dark in here, which is nice. Yeah. So we also have nothing that makes a light in here. Um, so there's Not even no a clock. like clocks or anything that has any sort of LED light. Um, so all the, so it's pitch black in here. We also have a air conditioning, heating, dehumidifier unit. Um, because sleep temperature is really important. You want to sleep at a very fairly low um, temperature. Um, so we make sure that we do that. Um, it, I'm, a, yeah. I'm also a hot sleeper, so I sweat a lot when I sleep. So. so one of the reasons why we have a king size bed is because- I'm a thrasher. He's a thrasher, a sprawler, and a sweater. Yeah. And I don't want any of that because that's gonna disrupt my sleep. So I can be over in my little corner and stay dry and, you know, have my space. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's better for our relationship and it's better for us as athletes, Yeah. for sure. We're also big fans of white noise. So the, in here, the, the unit, it's always going on when we're sleeping and you can, there's a little bit of white noise in the background and it really helps to, um, for us to fall asleep. But then when we travel, there are times where we have a little portable unit um, white noise machine. That's really nice. I sleep a lot and if I don't sleep a lot, I'm useless. Um, so... How much is a lot? Um, probably minimum 10 hours, otherwise I'm useless. So, yeah. Yeah, he's he's a big baby if he gets 8 hours of sleep. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I can't function, I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm more of an 8 hours of sleep kind of person, so... 
I'll normally be up for a couple hours before Ben's up and then gotten in some sort of session. Um, yeah. But yeah. It's it's so individual. We don't we don't set alarm clocks unless we ha absolutely have to. It's pretty rare because we want to let our bodies tell us how much we need. Yeah. So also we make sure that our bedroom is for sleeping. So like there's no TV or anything in here, no electronics in here. But also even though there are books on our book stand, we don't really read in here either because if you wake up in the middle of the night and you have a hard time sleeping and you pick up a book and you read it in your own bed, um, then you can start having, um, and you're tossing and turning in your bed, you can kind of get bad habits of not seeing your bed as a sleep sanctuary area. So we actually usually, if that happens, we'll get up and go into one of our guest bedrooms um, and read in there. So yeah. As far as phones in the bedroom, Sarah does not bring her phone in the bedroom. I do, and I plug it in to charge. Um, and but I put it on um, the night mode so that it doesn't make any noises. Uh, I only do that in case I need to set an alarm. I usually don't set an alarm before nine o'clock, but sometimes if I have to do something in the morning, I have to set an alarm. Wait, you wake up to an alarm? Sometimes when I have to wake up before nine o'clock. So I'm I'm awake so long before you. I didn't even <laughs> use an alarm. If I didn't have an alarm, I sleep to ten every day. That's amazing. Yeah. There there are days when Ben's nor morning run morning run. If I get out before noon, it's still a morning run. Okay. It's eleven fifty nine. It still counts as a morning it's run. It's hard when you wake up so late. <laughs> I still go to bed early, but I just have sometimes I have to sleep twelve hours, and then it's all of a sudden it's ten thirty in the morning. And I'm just waking up. It's hard life. Oh, uh, I've uh, there's no way I could be a triathlete because I have to do like three sessions a day. I could not have your schedule. Yeah. So if you're having a hard time sleeping after doing all this these things to try to improve your your sleep um, habit, and you're laying in bed and you're tossing and turning. A lot of times, not fighting things and and putting that negative juju. In, in your bed. Not Jujubee. Um, not Jujubee. <laughs> you said leave your bed and maybe read a book and take a, you know, a, a sleep aid with Jujubee. You know, <laughs> now you have the good Jujubee. Um, will help uh, facilitate better sleep and then you can go back into your bedroom into that good sleep environment um, to then fall asleep. And so having something that, you know, is independently certified and safe that you know what exactly what's in it um, is a great way to making sure you have that little sleep assistance if you so need it.